Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I'm a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on April 18th, 2022 at approximately 9.34 a.m. PST. Well, I figure I'm going to try this from a slightly different angle. Okay, I've been looking at the at the heart of the of the home and the and the the backbone really, but the center of the brain of the house. The brain of the house. Okay, now I'm putting this together in one sense. But I figure today I'll look and I'll take a look while I'm working on everything else. I'll look at the project I'm actually dealing on, the big project I've been dealing on. Now First and foremost, before I get into it, I came into this world, I returned to this life at this time for one primary purpose, and that is to remind people that working together, we can make this a better world for virtually everybody. Okay, now with this in mind, this is where you come in, because I cannot do this on my own. No individual can. Basically, what we've got is society going down a very black path right now, but you have the, have the ability or as an old commercial used to say, you have the power to change the direction this is going. But it starts with changing the direction your life is going. Now, I've talked about in depth, quite frankly, the heart of the home, the, the three chamber heart, the living room, the dining room, and the kitchen. Okay, I've talked about the various parts. If you look over the last couple of, couple of days here, I've covered a lot of information. Okay, but today I'm going to pull it together in a slightly different fashion. I'm going to look at the at the other big project I'm working on, which is the Elder Bakken Chronicles. Okay, now the reality is, whenever you're running anything, whenever you're doing anything, if you desire your life to change, you have to come up with a plan, and that quite often will require talking to other people, or at least it's easier because they come up with the idea you didn't. Okay, you've got to come up with a purpose. Why are you doing this? What is your plan? Okay, now why you're getting your life back in order, that's your issue. Okay, I'd love to hear why your reasons are. Mine are simple. I'm no longer content sitting by the wayside and letting my life pass by. And I've waited for people to straighten things out, and it hasn't happened. Now, I'll, I'll be 59 in a month. Okay, so it really is way past time, and I'm hoping that my talking about these things will help motivate you. Okay, now the, the catch to all of this is the, the whole thing that I ask, and this is pretty much it. Okay, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Apparently that also has some sort of an impact on the algorithm they use for bringing the videos up. Also, do remember to subscribe to the channel, because there's a lot of things happening, a lot of information coming out on various topics. Okay, recently I've gone live in the last couple of weeks, where on Saturday mornings from 8 a.m. to 8 to 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and on Sunday nights from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. also Pacific Standard Time, I go live to, to address all kinds of topics. Now, I'd love to hear your comments in the comments below. If you've got questions, absolutely post, you know, post them there. Or there's a whole list of, of contact points below these videos that tell you how to get a hold of me, as well as what books I've already got in publication. Now, I'm going to be very blunt about this, okay? And I'm not expecting it to do anything for me, okay? I'm having to go into my comments, and there are people that keep posting for, quite frankly, adult sites. Don't bother. As soon as I find them, I will delete them. Okay? It's not that I've got anything against, against adult sites. Nothing at all. As a matter of fact, I've got nothing against people that work on them. I just, myself, that is not what I'm here for. So I'm just simply going to ask you politely to not post those sites on my, on my, in my comments. Okay, just don't. I know it's a marketing thing, and this is just simply a question of following karmic law. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Okay, I'm pretty certain that there are sites that you don't want posted on your site, on, on your videos. 
So I'm just asking politely to stop it because every time I come across them, I will delete them. It's just that simple. But it's a pain in the neck and be so much nicer if you would simply follow karmic law and do as I request. Okay. Now that said, okay, the big topic I'm referring to is this one here. Okay. This set of, uh, this set of books. Okay, now I I wrote this. I wrote the initial and the the original draft on this or the original outline. I wrote back in grade 10. Okay. So I've got that. I'm, that's the birth of the wolf pack. The sequel to it is already in print. Okay, that's the end of an epoch. Okay, now these can be ordered directly through me, and there's a list of prices through me, or you can get them on, on authorhouse.com, Amazon, on Barnes & Noble, on Indigo, and I believe you can get them in chapters as well. And there's probably a few places I've missed. Okay. But they are available on those two books are available in in audio version. Uh correction. In in electronic version, I believe. I mean, I forget exactly what the term is, but that's okay. I'm still working on that side of it. But they are available in soft copy and hard copy. Okay. And I do, you know, I absolutely, you know, from my standpoint, it really boils down to this. I figured out a way, and if you, when you, when you buy the, when you buy any one of them, in the appendices, okay, there is the, the actual story listed, the original story. Okay, a few minor tweaks to it from the original, but it is a story. Okay, and what this boils down to is I figured out a way. I took this and took this storyline and went, okay, let's take all of all of Earth right from the beginning of time right to now. Okay, now this is a 12 volume saga. Okay, this is this just happens to be because of the way it came out. This is the first of the of the fourth trilogy. This saga is written in four trilogies back to back. This is the is the first book in the fourth trilogy. This is the second book in the fourth trilogy. The third book, I'm almost halfway through writing the final, I'm writing the, the original, the draft for it to go to print. I'm targeting the end of the year. Okay. But because of the way that it came to me, it came about, and the decision that I finally made with the input of a lot of other people is I will be simply running book 10 through book 12, and then we'll start at one and catch back up. Because the whole saga covers, and literally, not only does it combine these. Now, I found a way to, to link these all together. I have a tendency of cross-currenting. Now, this is a reference manual. Okay, Races of the World. These are all races that I've personally run into. You know, that I've personally dealt with hand in hand. But the thing is, this particular book simply gives data. It tells you here's what their society is like. Tells you this is the the social structure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so I did that. But in these books, you know, in the novels themselves, many of these races show up, and that's where you'll get to see the social interaction of some of them. Okay, so I've done that, and something I should have done. As a matter of fact, while I go and do it, I'm just going to pause this for a second and hope I don't screw it up. Okay, now I'm back. And I hope I didn't screw that up. Anyway, what I went to get was these. On top of the writing, okay, I've got those novels working. Now, here's the process I work with. And for those of you that are writing, yeah, that makes sense. For those of you that are writing your own stories, Okay, now I'm still my, very much dinosaur. So this little book right now is what I write with. Okay, to start with. I'll go down to a coffee shop and I will, while I'm drinking coffee, I will write in this. Okay. Okay, that's what I'm working with. I write them out in here, then I'll copy them onto soft copy. But while I'm at that, what I went to get was this. Okay. These are the figures I personally paint. 
But this particular bucket of them right here has ones I've identified. Okay, in other words, these are not only figures that I paint because it's a hobby, but I've combined that hobby with different figures representing the characters so that while I'm writing, I get a more clear idea of what's going on. Okay, it's easier to visualize if you've got little representations. So I take figures like this, and I paint them up. Now this one is almost complete. Okay, but I've got various different ones depending. Okay, and it just depends on what I'm working with. But I write them out. You know, I write the characters and the figures out. And what the, the birth of the wolf pack itself is literally brings together a small group of multi of multifaceted individuals. Every one of the primary characters is based on a gaming character that somebody else built. Okay, that somebody I was actually gaming with built. Okay. Now in the front of the book I actually in the front of the book I actually specify who the who the actual gamers were by first name. Okay. As far as that's where they came from. And that's where they were based on. These are not intended to be absolute replications. Because what I did. Was I took the characters that were built. The gaming characters. And combined that aspect. With some of the personality of the individuals. Because I enjoyed, I enjoyed gaming with them so much. And the time we had away from the gaming table was so impactful. I decided to put it all together. Okay, but it happened to fit very nicely on the back end of the of the story that you'll read in the in the back of, in the appendix. There's a story that tells you the evolution of the entire system. Okay, the birth of the wolf planet pack takes place after the end of the story. Okay, that final trilogy is something that was literally made up. Of just what I had, what I'd gone through in a, a natural extrapolation, but it cross references and backflashes into the other books, and then through the other books, which most of them are based on on interactions that I had. Now the characters are based on characters that are mainstream were based on characters on characters of people that I personally met. Most of the characters in these books are literally based on experiences I've had or experiences that the game that the characters in the games have had. Okay, including many of the races. Now, I wrote this all together and it cross references itself, but in the early part in the early novels, like the one coming out this year, they talk they talk a little bit about past lives, about reincarnation, about energy manipulation. But when we get into the into the future copies, what we'll get into is an in-depth discussion of soulmates, you know, soulmates, twin flames, you know, soul families, how the whole concept of energetic healing works, how the whole concept of like what I did in the books was I combined creationism, evolution, science, magic, technology, nature. Humans, ancient races, as in elves, dwarves, you know, satyrs, that sort of thing. Off-worlders, as in, you know, your Kamalians, your Maldocs, your, your, you, you may run into, I don't know yet, you may run into grades. But what I'm doing, okay, is I'm combining all of these under one roof. Okay. And it's, it's a complete, like, it's a complete series, a complete uh, overview, if you will. Okay, and I even managed to tell you, there's a section in it in one of the books where we actually end up in space, and there's a, an offshoot story that will come out of a of time that the primary character from the birth of the wolf pack, Jeremiah Wolfstrand, operating in all likelihood by another name, uh, no, in all fairness, because of where it fits, he'll already be in place. So Jeremiah Wallstrom, before the world collapses, because the birth of the wolf pack is a, it's a post-apocalyptic. Okay, the world's already gone to heck in a handbasket. He's one of the survivors. Okay, 
But prior to that, he ends up on a space station. Okay, in one of the prior books. But sadly, that will be a couple of years down the road before you see that one. In all fairness, if I, if I average one book a year, uh, we're looking at least five years. Okay, before it can come out. Might be six, I don't know. The space and the space side of it. Depending on if I decide to write it and put it in print before it ever gets out there. Okay, but, and that is a possibility in all fairness. I'm writing 32 books at, at this point. Wouldn't hurt to add another one. Okay, so that's how this is all coming about. Okay, and yeah, I realize this is a, a lot of information. The way I figured it, if I'm going to make my my living, if I'm going to turn around and take this frame of mind of getting these books and several others into print, okay, then I'm going to have to start looking at it in the way of, of not just a hobby, not just a way of getting the story written, because primarily the idea for me was to get the story on paper. Okay, so I'm going to complete it one way or the other anyway. Okay. But there are other books that are coming up as well, and some are already in print. This one, for instance, okay, Believe in Yourself and Follow Your Dreams. This gives you the backbone information on how I actually got to the point of writing, of writing at all. Okay, then we've got one called Believe in Your Business and Follow Your Dreams. And of course, the children's book. These are just, these are simply self-help, okay. This one is a children's book, okay, quite literally written for my eldest son when he was just two years old, okay. Now, all of these books are listed below the, in this video, but when it, came to, when it comes to writing, it becomes a real, an all-encompassing thing in a lot of ways. And what has happened, and I sort of got away from it from the last little while, for one primary reason, okay. Unfortunately, life happens on occasion, and when I lost my brother a couple of months back, well, actually it was only last month, but his his birthday would have been would have been today. He would have turned sixty five today. No, he wouldn't. I'm a couple of days off. Not he won't turn that until the twenty fourth. Oh, that's why I was working on horoscopes, thinking it was the twenty fourth. On the twenty fourth of this month. He, he would have been turning 65, but when he passed, it threw me for a little bit of a loop. And so now it's time to get back to work. Okay. Now, on top of having these books written, right, the other thing I did was on the internet here, or not on the internet, but on, on an Excel spreadsheet, I've got each of the characters listed from the various books, so I know when they came in, you know, when they first showed up, because there will be, once all of them are written, I'm gearing up to write an appendices. And all it's going to be is here's the person, here's what they look like, who they were, and here's when they showed up in which book. So it could be a rather extensive, the, the, the compendium could be a rather extensive book. Because when you think about it, some of the characters show up in multiple books, some of them only show up in one. Right. But this is all a way of keeping track and making sure there is an internal continuity. And where it comes to writing, that is the thing you have to look at. You're painting a picture, it applies sort of to painting as well, really. If you're striving to paint a picture, you get an overall view of what you're looking for. You know, this is what I desire to show. Well, this saga, I've got a very, a very well-defined outcome. I know exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so it takes time, but you've got to paint, paint it. You've got to paint the picture with words, one step at a time. The idea for me is that when you're reading the book, you get drawn into it so that it's an escape from reality. Because I'll tell you, if as a post-apocalyptic story goes, if this is actually your reality, you may have a problem. Okay, but you take a look at the group. You've got Jeremiah Wolfstrom. Okay, basically, this is a gentleman, he's a survivor, okay, but he has one simple outlook, okay, he follows the karmic laws. Now, simply put, 
I Jeremiah Wolfstrom was a character that I personally built, okay, and played for a number of years. In you know, playing, he was actually built in in a game called Aftermath. Some of you may recognize it, especially if you're a gamer, okay. But he had one concept when I built him, okay. You know, his basic concept was simple. The world's gone to heck in a handbasket, but I didn't choose for it to go there. But dang it, I'm going to have the best of the best. Okay. But he's also a he's also an individual that will step up and do what he can to help make the world a better place. And this is why the Wolf Pack is pulled together. It's a turn around a there's a threat going on in the area. And Jeremiah has taken it upon himself to step up to the plate, much like some of you do. You'll see something wrong, you step up to the plate and go, okay, how can I correct this? Now, this is a violent story. This is not a story for children. Okay. It's, uh, you know, if you've, got, if you've got kids that are gaming, if you're playing things like Call of Duty and that sort of thing, you won't have a problem with it. But what I did was I try and put people right smack in the heart of the story. Where they land, where they can be drawn to the people. Now, of course, Jeremiah himself is a character unto himself. He's got his own goals. But there is a grandfather figure in there, a gentleman that really does reach out. I, I try to get him to reach out as that, as that grandfather figure, the one that will reach out and take care of the kids if they're in trouble, that sort of thing. Okay, there is a gentleman that, in, well, let's see, Jeremiah is ex-military, Blade is ex-military, Mickey is ex-military, okay, they, so these people have training, okay, but caught in all of this is a small group of gamers, just simple everyday people. Now, like I've told people, there are some really good authors out there. So there are some phenomenal authors out there. The one that got me looking at writing at all was, it was a gentleman by the name of J.R.R. Tolkien. The first book I ever owned, that, that I ever found I couldn't, couldn't really bring myself to put down, was The Hobbit. Okay, now that's where, so when I wrote the, when I wrote the outline, it had a lot of that going on. It took it right to the fall of man. But as I got, got older and got into the gaming, this other aspect, what happens after the fall of man, that's where the birth of the wolf pack comes in. Okay, now there is a volume that will come out way down the road that talks about the actual war, the actual great collapse. Okay, that will get covered in another one of the books. But when the birth of the wolf pack comes out, this is after that story. Many of these races are still alive today. Okay, so you've got these three people that are military. Then you've got a gentleman that, that was raised. He, essentially, he grew up with a silver spoon in his hand. Okay, but don't, oh, yeah, and that reminds me, he did go on as a young adult to become special forces. Okay. So we are dealing with military people, absolutely. But then you've got Tanya, who is a hillbilly, okay? She is capable of combat, very capable of combat, but of course you gotta remember, the world goes to heck in a handbasket, and people learn to survive any way they can. Okay. Now, when you take a look at, at her, she's a hillbilly, then we have a gentleman that worked on the wrong side of the law for most of his life and walked away from it to come to the new world to look for a more, shall we say, amicable environment. And then the Goran world goes to hack in a handbasket and he finds himself right back in the thick of it. And let me think here. We got Blade, Ozzy, Mickey, Tanya, Dirk, Wilhelm. I'm sure I'm missing somebody. I'm absolutely certain I'm missing somebody. So I'm going to do that again. There's Jeremiah. There's Blade. There's Ozzy. There's Tanya. There's Dirk. There's Wilhelm. And there's Mickey. Yeah, that should be all seven. Okay. 
if you take a look at the back of this book, this is the first one. And these three here, the top gentleman, that's Jeremiah. The one in the white shirt, that is Wilhelm Schunter. He's the one that walked on the black side and walked away. Okay, left that life altogether. And then we have Tanya, who is the, the young lass there with the pistol. Okay, that's the hillbilly. Then we go to this book here. And we have the bottom of the black chap there. That's Blake. Okay. And the guy that was raised with the silver spoon, that would be, that would be, would be Dirk right there. Okay. He's the one that essentially was raised, raised on a silver spoon. Okay. Now that's five out of the seven. The other two are on the, are on the other, on the third book. Okay. Now that picture at the top. That is a Srazazian ship, okay, and you'll get to find out about that one, okay, that is one of the races that you'll run into, okay, not right off the bat, but it is one of the races you'll run into. As a matter of fact, this particular book here, this is the second one, this gentleman right here, if you take a look at him, there's Jeremiah right there, and this one here, the tall, the tall reptilian, that is Kula. He is Razazi. But if you take a look at the size of him and the size of his mates, that'll give you an idea of the power these guys have. Okay. Now you can tell by the fact they're around a fireplace, you know, a fire pit, that that group of people is very, is quite, you know, they get along quite well. Okay. But these are old friends. Okay. This isn't the wolf pack. The wolf pack itself, I don't actually have a picture thereof. But this is a group of old of older people. You've got this guy with the axe, that is Arneson Hardicane. He happens to be an ancient dwarf. Okay, then you have Catalina Shorman. The lady with the with the little dragon. Yes, that's a tiny little dragon. Okay, Catalina is the one in the cloak. She is one of the original keepers, meaning it's her people that turn around and take care of the animals that have been left behind. Okay. And this last chap here, where is he here? This one over here. Is, this one right here. That is, is uh, that's Tyndall. He is, a, he is one of the original elves. And these are people that are coming together because in the Return to Paradise, the next story coming out, it covers the end of the whole mess, okay, and sets things in motion. And yes, they even figured out a way that there is, there is a place for it to go, okay. But this, and the reason I did this is I figured I'd take a, take a little bit of a shift, okay, and I'm going to bring this to a close. But I'd love to hear your comments below. If you've got questions or if you've got topics you'd like me to take a look at, absolutely drop me a line in the comments below or drop me a direct line in one of the contact points and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to close this off today. So, until tomorrow, take care of yourselves and each other and for pity's sakes, stay positive.